Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. People ask me, why New York? Well, why not? <laughs> to me, I see New York and sport, there is some similarity. They, to me, I see them really alike. Sport is dynamic. New York is the most dynamic city in the world. Sport is diversity. New York is the most diversity city in the world. I lived in New York 2005, 2006, 2007. I, I never felt I was a stranger. I always felt I am at home. Sport became a business. Small uh, New York City is the most influential business city in the world. Sport, to a certain degree, became politics. And in New York, there is the UN and the Security Council. Well, what sport can learn from New York City? As you all know, sport faces these days many challenges. As New York City and its history faced so many challenges. And this city, it was the city which knocked down the most organized crime in history. And sport organization, they must safeguard sport as New York City did. In New York City, they faced the most brutal terrorist attack but the city never surrendered. They moved on and they made sure that the people have a better life. Sport organization, they must learn from New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to the fifth annual Securing Sport Conference. I am honored and privileged to be standing before you all today. To different people, sport means different things. For some, it is the games we love to play. For others, it is the teams that we love to cheer for. And still for others, it is an unparalleled economic, social, and cultural force that can lift up entire nations. And as President Obama described it earlier this year, during the G7. Sport is a matter of incredible national pride. And it was really clear when the US soccer team, the women's uh, soccer team won the Women's World Cup. However you define it, it is clear that sport holds a special place in our collective consciousness. Sport connects us. It binds us together like nothing else. Sport positively impacts billions of lives every single day. And yet sport is under attack. One year ago, I was securing sport 2014 in London. I spoke about the corruption in sport and what sport faced at that time. We discussed then ways and means to defeat the corruption. I wish I could tell you that we have won and the fight is over. But I cannot. Unfortunately, corruption is still very much part of sport. Like a virus, it has spread from league to league, federation to federation. It's true we have made some excellent progress against this disease. And that's due to the effort of many of the people in this room. But the threat has intensified. The threat has grown larger and grown more complicated. Match fixing, financial wrongdoing, child trafficking, bed rigging, these are the symptoms. We already know the diagnosis. Now we need a cure, which is to say we need solutions. As a stewards of sport, we have a profound responsibility to protect it for this generation and the future generation, which is why the overarching theme of Securing Sport 2015 is accountability to the sport and business executives. I ask how can we better hold ourselves accountable? What can we do to safeguard sport around the world? 
How can we stop match fixing dead in its tracks? How can we prepare today for the emerging threats of tomorrow? And how can we come together and protect the economic and cultural legacy of sport? These are the questions we must answer if we are to cure sport of corruption once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no illusions about the size and scope of the problem. I know that sport faces an unprecedented crisis, but I am not deterred. Let me tell you a story. I began my career not in sport, but in the Air Force. And during my service, we were told that in order to take off, a pilot will purposely fly into the headwinds. And I think Lord Stephen can agree on this. It is counterintuitive. No. You would think that a pilot would want tailwinds to push the plane forward. But in reality, the headwinds actually generate additional lift under the wing. Flying into the wind makes it easy to take off. In other words, it is the most challenging environments that allow us to reach the greatest heights. Yes, the headwinds in sport are difficult to navigate. But as someone with a deep passion for sport, I believe that those headwinds will give us the push and inspiration we need to do great things. When I founded the International Center for Sport Security, it was with a vision of what sport could be, what sport should be, safe, secure, and clean. An institution that brings people together and the celebration of a hard work and a dedication and, a, and of our greatest achievement. I saw stadiums and arenas free from violence. I saw major events that benefit the communities that hosted them. I saw games free from corruption. I saw children playing safely and freely, happily, being inspired by sport and their sporting heroes. And I saw sport economy that played by the rules on and off the field. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we can make this vision a reality. If and only if we are willing to take serious, significant action. The time for small fixes is over. Public opinion cannot be satisfied with a cosmetic reform or a cosmetic solution. I ask FIFA and IOC to listen to the public opinion before it is too late. No one entity on sport, how dare anyone think otherwise? Sport is a form of traditional knowledge. Sport is a form of cultural expression, one not limited to a specific group. Sport is a genetic resource of a humankind. Since the early days of the ISSS, we have mobilized our effort to help to safeguard sport. Many ministers and many governments, many international organizations, UNESCO, like UNESCO, UNODC, UNICEF, the Organization of American State, to name but a few, and leading academic institutions like the Sorbonne University and Harvard, have believed in our vision and supported our efforts. But who is missing? Sport. And who else? Business. Let me yet again express my desire that the sport movement and its commercial partners unite and join the anti-corruption team. Today, not tomorrow. Let's knock down all rivalries and divisions cross sectors and continents, and unite for the sake of sport. We need a credible, holistic, and global approach to safeguarding sport. Let's share with, learn from one another. Let's make plan, but let's put them in motion. Let's inspire others to join us. And most importantly, let's hold ourselves accountable. So when we come together one year from today at the next Securing Sport 
we can be proud of what we have accomplished. I am by nature optimistic. And be optimistic for the future. Thank you very much. If you allow me before I leave the stage, I wanted to say just one more thing. I could not have started the ISSS without the help of my friend Brian Galloway. He supported our work from its earliest day. In fact, he started with us before our office was even <coughs> completed. Brian was in charge of our technology operation and took it from non-existence to a world class. I think he was running where we started two together. And they gave you very difficult task. <laughs> he was a vital member of our team every step of the way. Sadly, in March of 2012, Brian suffered a terrible motorcycle accident. After five weeks in the hospital in Doha, he left to rehabilitate in Chicago, doing five to six hours of rehab a day for three months. Brian fought. And in July of 2012, he returned to Doha and got right back to work. He didn't let anything hold him back. Actually, when I visited Brian after his ex accident at 2012, at that time, I was also finding it really difficult to take the ISSS and make it global. But when I saw my friend Brian, and I saw his, how strong he is, how his spirit has inspired me. And they say I will overcome all the challenges. So thank you. Sir. Actually, when he came back, he built the online knowledge portal that we still use today. And all the ISSS members are thankful to you. Now the ISSS is almost paperless. And thanks to Brian and his team. At the end of the year, he moved back to the United States to continue his rehabilitation. Since then, Brian has continued to offer counsel because I told him he will be forever a member of ISSS. Counsel and advice to the ISSS, and I cannot thank him enough. But more importantly, Brian has done something that goes beyond our work here and abroad. Since his accident, Brian has demonstrated uncommon strength and character. He has become a foremost advocate for wheelchair sport and an unbeatable wheelchair lacrosse player at that. In fact, just last, last year, Brian founded a not-for-profit organization in his home of Indianapolis and the Adaptive Sports, which helps disabled athletes play the games they love and uh, live an active health and healthy life. Brian has shown us all that no obstacles is paramount and that even the biggest challenges can be overcome. In short, Brian has really the uh, values and spirit of sport better than any man I know. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> On behalf of the ISSS, I hope you can accept and save the dream initiative. A little donation to what you are doing for sport and for people. Thank you.